My name is John Freda, uh, National Italian American Action Network. We are here today to protest the Battery Park City's authorities uh, decision to lease this building, this historic building, to a restaurant rather than an Italian American museum. It's a crime that this, these steps were taken by Battery Park City Authority, especially after they did the right thing with the Jewish community by giving them space and air rights for the Museum of Jewish Heritage, and they did the right thing with the Irish community by giving them space and building them the Irish Memor uh, Famine Memorial. The Italian-American community wanted to lease this building. They didn't want it for free, and they were told no. The Italian-American community deserves a space in this area. This is the area where the Italian-Americans first set foot in, in America. They came from Ellis Island right into this spot. And for us not to have a space is a slap in the face to our community. We did file a Freedom of Information request on Battery Park City Authority to find out how they made their decision. Battery Park City Authority was very reluctant to release that information to us, even though it was covered under foil. Only after we got an attorney to threaten them with a lawsuit did they start releasing some of the information, but not all the information that we're entitled to. At this point, we want to make it very clear to the Battery Park City Authority that we're not second-class citizens. We want to make it very clear that we are no longer going to accept crumbs. We want our piece of the pie just like everyone else gets. And it's time for them to realize that they're going to have to discuss it with us and make a decision that's better for the community. Community Board 1 even took a position that this site should be a cultural institution, not a restaurant. Most of us couldn't afford to go to anyway. This is supposed to be open space for the community. Putting a restaurant here, a restaurant that's going to cost a lot of money, doesn't benefit this community and doesn't benefit the Italian American community at all. So we're here to send a very clear signal to Bill Thompson and to the Battery Park City Authority and to Governor Cuomo that this isn't acceptable. And it's time that they recognize our community as a community that has contributed so much to America and a community that deserves its rightful place. My name is Jean Bergantini Grillo and I am the district leader for the 66th Assembly District. I'm a longtime resident of Lower Manhattan. I am the daughter of uh, Albert Bergantini who came to this country as an immigrant and he and my mother raised six daughters. I am also a 9-11 survivor and someone who volunteered to work at St. Paul's um, and for eight months. I couldn't help but notice reading the list of names of those who perished. How many of those names were of Italian-American uh, heritage? If we are willing to live in this community, to come here from foreign shores and raise families, and then in fact to die in the service of this community, then why not have a building to commemorate, as we have with those of Jewish heritage and Irish heritage and the Native American, also of Italian-American heritage? Thank you. My name is Mark Amoruso. We're here at Pier A. Uh, in Lower Manhattan and I want to talk a little bit about the Battery uh, Park City Authority decision and lack of transparency. Bill Thompson who was in charge of the Battery Park City Authority, he was almost mayor of New York City. When he ran for mayor he promised transparency and so did Governor Cuomo. But this deal stinks. It is backroom deals with absolutely no transparency or public meetings. And we want to know what's going on and there are other cultural institutions down here and they deserve to be there and so does Italian American communities. My name is Bill Russo and I am a board member of the Italian Heritage and Culture Committee. I am also co-chair with Bob Marshall here of the Blood Drive for the Feast of San Gennaro. And the reason I bring that up, the Blood Drive, is because Americans of Italian heritage have been giving and giving to this country since we first came to America in the presence of Pietro Alberti, the first Italian in America. Americans have served in World War I, World War II, and all the wars declared and undeclared. 
since their arrival in America. And in fact, what we ask going forward is consideration in the decisions of government, and government is represented by people, and our plea, our request basically is to the citizens that they understand that Italian Americans deserve something back from all our giving. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm George Altamare. Um, I'm here uh, to protest uh, something which is criminal in its action. Even if it weren't a, ma a matter of Italian Americans getting their due, there should not be public property, pu public parks, which this splendid park is part of it, Beverly Park, used for high ended restaurants, corporation greed. We have to remind ourselves with, uh, without uh, uh, immodesty that Italian Americans, as an ethnic group, have received more medals of honor for, for fighting for this country than any other single group, by far. And we're very proud of that. We're very proud of the fact that Italian Americans have been leaders. I'm Dr. Melissa Aleandri. I'm a historian as well as the Vice President of the Tetrasine Lodge here in Lower Manhattan. And I just want to say that this area reeks of historicity and it should be recognized. And we need a space in this location, which is the beginning of immigrants of all kinds to come here, but certainly the predominantly number of Italian Americans who have come through these uh, portals here. And so to use a space for commercial, high-end purposes in a public building and a public park for me is criminal and just does not serve the historic representation that this area should have. Thank you. My name is Stephanie. I'm a trustee with the Sons of Italy of the Petrosino Lodge of Lower Manhattan. If it wasn't for Columbus, Christopher Columbus, we wouldn't be here of Italian heritage. And I knew Governor Cuomo also, fighting for our, our, our equal rights. All of these things add up to what we need in Lower Manhattan, more culture, more exposure, because Italians have given so much to our community, and there's no reason at all why we shouldn't have this beautiful space for people from around the world to come and enjoy it with us. Charles Piazza. I'm a trustee with the uh, Order of the Sons of Italy who should be an Italian-American presence right here. Uh, I'm Arthur Piccolo, a proud Italian-American. I think everyone needs to fully understand why we're having this briefing, why we're having this rally, what's really happening here. June, actually more than October, is Italian-American month. June is when the very first Italian-American, Albiano Lupo, arrived in Jamestown in 1610. Following him, what was even more important to Italian-American history is that on June 2nd, 1635, Pietro Alberti arrived in New Amsterdam, which would become New York City, which would become the Italian capital of the United States. And the boat that he came in on would have moored itself exactly where Pire, Pire, which we're fighting for, exactly where Pire, where we're standing, was part of the harbor back in 1635. And on June 2nd, Pietro Alberde, after traveling the world, starting from Venice, arrived here and got off that ship and took a small boat to where we're going to go shortly, to Bowling Green, and first stood in America and began, in many ways, the Italian-American experience. We're going to also, the flag that Mark Amoruso is holding, we're going to raise the Italian flag there, where we really also want to raise the Italian flag is over PRA, and we are going to do that next year. Because the decision that was made by the Battery Park City to turn this important public building, this large public building, PRA, 40,000 square feet, into a private restaurant, cannot be justified. It was the decision made by the Battery Park City Authority in private, without any public input. As a matter of fact, for those who have watched the video of the meeting that took place on March the 8th, 
Bill Thompson went into executive session, which meant there was no public allowed in the room, the only the members to discuss and make the decision to award PRA all 40,000 square foot of it to a private restaurateur. So we have a public body, the Battery Park City Authority, we have a public building, PRA, we have 30 million plus of public money that is being used to renovate this building right now. And Thompson and the board of the Battery Park City do, they went into executive session and privately decided to basically give away this building to a private company, not for a few months, not for a year, for the next 30 years, in a lease that the rate at which they're paying, by the time we reach the later years of this lease, it'll basically be literally free space. If you or I, or any New Yorker, or any American wants to step into that building, PRA, once it's reopened, you're going to have to take out your wallet, a public building, an historic building. The only way you're going to get inside is to, is to take out your credit card and spend a lot of money for dinner here. People have not seen the lease that they're supposedly given to this restaurant group that should be public record. The only option here is to reopen the process, as other speakers have said. This process has to start again. There were three finalists to get the lease for this. One of them was the Italian American Museum. There need to be public hearings. There needs to be a public accounting. We have a thousand questions about this. This decision cannot be justified. And the best use for the city, the, the, what will bring the most benefit to the city, is this building becoming, finally, finally, finally the city finally having a great Italian American museum on the very spot where the first Italian New Yorker, Pietro Alberti, landed here in 1635. What could be better for the city? What could be better for Damn. all of them? John Fratter has been leading a great effort. This, this process must be reopened. We have asked for documentation, as John said. We have we had a fight for 60 days, long over the, the point where we should have received the documents, and what we got was only a very partial amount of documents. It's a challenge for the Italian-American community, but if we're up to the challenge, and we need to be, we will get the Battery Park City to reverse this decision, and we're still waiting to hear. Governor Cuomo's doing a lot of great things for all kinds of New Yorkers. He cannot forget, must not forget, that among every other group is his own group, the Italian-Americans. There is no way that if he looks at this matter that he can justify what the state authority that reports to him did here. There is not a single other existing building that, can, that has the same character as this building. There is no other place that has the same quality as this building to be an Italian-American museum. Um, many of the other ethnic groups have been taken care of, some of them right here in Battery Park City. We all applauded when the Battery Park City gave land and millions of dollars, in effect, to the Jewish community for the Jewish Heritage Museum. We all stood and applauded and supported when the Irish community were given a valuable plot of land in Battery Park City for, their, for, the, for, the, for the famine memorial and which was paid for totally by Battery Park City Authority. All we're looking for is fairness and if we get fairness, what's going to happen is that PRA is going to become the brand new Italian American Museum. We're going to have a museum here. We're going to have the Italian American Museum here. Um, this decision will not stand. Let's do it. Thank you.